Pixelmator Photo is the latest in a line of photo editing apps on the iPad. But what's great about Pixelmator Photo is you don't have to know anything about editing photos to use the app. I'll explain more in a bit, but first we need to talk about what Pixelmator Photo is. You may have heard me talk about an app called Pixelmator in the past. Well, it's completely different. Pixelmator is more for manipulating multiple photos into creating something new, like what I do for the backgrounds for these videos. The best way to describe Pixelmator Photo is for touching up photos, fixing colors, contrast, and white balance. Pixelmator is for fixing mistakes or adding elements and titles to an image. You won't find the ability to add layers in Pixelmator Photo, but you will find amazing tools to help you punch up your photos to the next notch. The first thing you'll see in Pixelmator Photo is the Files app API. This makes me very happy. As iOS on the iPad gets more serious, more apps will be moving away from storing photos and videos in the Photos app by default. Here you can browse all your cloud services and local folders for the photos you wish to work on. Any third-party service that works with the Files app will be here. I keep most of the photos I work on in Dropbox, so it's really easy for me to pull up whatever I want. Pixelmator Photo does have raw support for shooting off of a DSLR or an app like Obscura. You can edit photos in full raw. For those that don't know, raw is an uncompressed photo format. When you take a photo in raw, you get a lot more detail and information in the photo over a traditional photo format like JPEG. This means you can do more with your edit. You'll see a tag on each photo that'll say raw, so you know that it's a raw photo. If you're still storing photos in the Photos app, you can just hit the plus button in the top right corner. This will bring up your whole photo library. Once I have my photo selected, the editing window will pop up. As we move through Pixelmator Photo, you'll see some buttons that are labeled ML. This stands for machine learning. What this will do is analyze your photo and then edit it using machine learning to where it thinks it needs to be. It's what sets Pixelmator Photo apart from its competitors, but we're going to talk more about that as we move through the app. Let's start off with the crop tool to demonstrate machine learning. Down at the bottom, you'll see typical crop controls. I can rotate the photo and mirror it. Over to the left side, I can change the framing of the photo. And next to that, I can either straighten or change the perspective. Over on the right side is the machine learning button. If I hit this, Pixelmator Photo will start to analyze the photo, and then we'll use machine learning to crop the photo to where it thinks it should be. Honestly, it's pretty cool. It doesn't get it right 100% of the time, but for people that are just learning photo editing, this can be a handy tool. Let's take a look at the Heal tool. The Heal tool is something a lot of photo editing applications have, but I don't think I've seen any on the iPad work as well as I have seen with Pixelmator Photo. Just like a lot of other parts with Pixelmator Photo, the Heal tool uses machine learning. If we hit the Heal tool button in the top right corner, we get a slider at the bottom. This will change how big the radius of the Heal tool is. Now just use your finger or the Apple Pencil to mark up what you want gone. Pixelmator Photo will then analyze the photo and then take out whatever you marked up. This isn't meant for taking out huge chunks of your photos, but little things, like if you have a picture of the sky and there's a plane or a bird flying by. The color correcting and editing options in Pixelmator Photo are pretty standard, but at this point, it should be no surprise that some of these options have support for machine learning, and that takes it to a whole nother level. If you know nothing about levels, brightness, and contrast, you can just hit the machine learning function, and Pixelmator Photo will figure out what the best settings are for you based on the photo. It doesn't always get it right, but it does a pretty good job. And even if it doesn't get it completely right, it should give you an idea of what you need to adjust to get your photo to where you want it to be. If you're already a professional at editing photos, these options will be very natural to you. They're broken up into groups so you don't get bombarded with settings. If you want to learn how to edit photos, I recommend starting with brightness and contrast. One of the most common things I do is lower the brightness by a couple of points and up the contrast by a couple of points. It just makes everything a bit more punchier. The next thing I like to do is adjust the white balance. The white balance is essentially a point of reference for what white is in the photo. Then it can adjust the rest of the colors based off that to make them more neutral. This can either be really easy or really hard. If you have something that's supposed to be white in the photo, you can take the eyedropper tool, drag it over it, then Pixelmator Photo will adjust that whole image to the white level that you just selected. If you don't have anything white in the image, you can just try the machine learning option. Finally, if this doesn't work, you'll have to manually adjust it. Make sure you don't have anything on like Night Shift or True Tone. Curves is another section I like to mess with. Here you can play around with the color settings. The multicolor section is the default, and I like to make this kind of a sideways S. You bring the lows down and you turn the highs up. This will make the colors pop in the photo. You can adjust the red, green, and blue settings individually as well. 
Once you have something set the way you like it, hit the lock button and those settings won't change until you unlock them. You can also toggle off whole groups so it'll disable any changes you made in that area. If you have a photo where you won't like it, you can long press on the photo to see the original version. This way you can see if any of the changes you made really are improvements. There are a ton more settings in here. I just recommend finding an image with lots of color and playing around with it. Down at the bottom of Pixelmator Photo, you'll see a section of templates for photo editing you can use. These are obviously great if you're just getting started into photo editing, but I found myself using them as starting points as well for my edits. If you're not sure what they are, you can tap on the title card for each section and you'll get a summary of what that section is. I thought this was very clever for the developers to put in. Most of the time in other apps, they're just called like modern or cinematic, and they don't really give you the detail of what that means. To save a photo when you're all done, just hit the export button. You'll be presented with three options. The first will modify the original photo in the Photos app if that's where the image came from. The second will save a copy to the Photos app. The third will save an image out to the Files app and let you pick where you want to save it. To sum up everything, I really like Pixelmator Photo. It's definitely one of the most interesting photo editors on iOS. It does things like files app support, which I want to see across all apps that deal with some sort of files in iOS. For a flat cost of $4.99, it's a great deal for a great photo editor.